delicious, nutritious, instant Ovaltine. The fortified food drink that tops them all. Now for a visit to the Secret Squadron Hall of Fame. Well, here we are, Pat, Peggy. Every one of these great athletes is a member of the Secret Squadron. Gee, Crazy Legs Hirsch. Yes, one of football's all-time, all-time greats. And Duke Snyder, a real big leaguer and home run slugger for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Peggy, you should know who this is. Florence Chadwick. Yes. Florence holds the world's record for swimming the English Channel, the only woman ever to swim it both ways. Let's join her on the beach. Florence, how do you keep yourself in condition? By getting plenty of sleep, exercise, and the right kind of foods. And I drink chocolate-flavored Ovaltine. Remember, I said Ovaltine. An athlete wants real nourishment, not just a flavoring for milk or a drink with just a few vitamins. Right, Florence. Athletes do need the right kind of nourishment, and Ovaltine gives you extra vitamins, minerals, and other important food elements. And chocolate-flavored Ovaltine is delicious, too. Right again, Florence. Boys and girls, drink your Ovaltine every day, just as Florence Chadwick says, get chocolate-flavored Ovaltine. On a mountaintop high above a large city stands the headquarters of a man devoted to the cause of freedom and justice. A war hero who has never stopped fighting against his country's enemies. A private citizen who is dedicating his life to the struggle against evil men everywhere. Captain Midnight. This is a very interesting device, Tut. Well, that demonstrates a principle we may find use for someday. What is it? It's a radiation concentrator. Looks like a piece of glass to me. Uh, it's a lens, Icky. And just as the lens in a magnifying glass will concentrate the rays of the sun in order to create fire, so this lens will concentrate the radiations in fissionable material to do the same thing. Show him how it works, Ted. You see this stuff right here? That's a piece of uranium-bearing ore. That's one of the fissionable materials in its raw state. Now, you see this block of wood? Well, sure I see it. It's a piece of wood. Yeah, but you watch what happens when I put the lens between the rock and the wood. Hey, say, that's pretty good. I bet every boy scout in the world would like one of those things for starting fires. The only trouble with that, Aki, you'd have to have a chunk of radioactive material before you could use it. Oh, yeah. Joy killer. We got company. You know him? Yes, it's Mr. Hobson. He's an important intelligence official from Washington. Let him in, Icky. Any suggestions for improving this? Well, if we could build up the X factor of the Zebulon element, we might be able to generate a heat of really useful intensity. We could try. Let me play around with this for a while, Ted. Good morning, gentlemen. Hello there, Mr. Hobson. How are you? Nice to see you again. This is Ichabod Mudd, my co-pilot and general assistant. Mr. Mudd. And this is Aristotle Jones, my lab man. Mr. Jones. Pleasure, sir. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Now, what brings you here, Mr. Hobson? Well, I'm on a secret assignment to investigate an unlicensed and very unfriendly radio transmitter that's been operating south of the border. You say has been operating. What's the problem? It uh, went off the air last Wednesday. Well, if they're not sending messages, you've got nothing to worry about. On the contrary. It's when an enemy station is off the air that we worry about it. Now that we've broken their code, we want to know what they're saying. And who they're saying it to. That's right. Have you any idea why it went off the air? This transmitter is located in a rather remote section of Mexico. And it's our guess they're having difficulty getting the necessary repairs made. Well, usually these enemy radio stations are headquarters for bigger things. Just before this station went off the air, they sent an incomplete message referring to shipments of fissionable materials. We must know what this message is about. It may be of vital importance to the entire Western Hemisphere. Mr. Hobson? We'd like to volunteer to help. I was hoping you'd say that. But, uh, how would you operate? Well, we could go to Mexico. Mickey and I could uh, be traveling fix-it men. An excellent idea. As fix-it men, you'd be free to travel anywhere without arousing suspicion. We'll work in an area where we know their transmitter's located. They'll bring their set to us to be repaired, we hope. Well, at least that's the theory. 
And I can monitor the transmitter from here. There's one thing I must warn you about. These men are dangerous. And if they find out what you're really up to, well, I don't think they'd stop at anything. We'll chance that. I'll arrange to have the truck with all your equipment in it when you get there. Good luck. And be careful. Thank you. We will. Hey, Cole. Here we come. Hey, <laughs> We put down the Santa Del Rail? I filed a flight plan to Dos Flores. That's the nearest airport to Santa Del Rio, and that's where Mr. Hobson said he'd have our equipment waiting for us. Good. Dos Flores Airport. It's Jet Aircraft 7700, 13 miles southwest of the field, 8,000 feet. Landing instructions. Over. like Mr. Hobson said it would be. Yeah, he sure did make all the arrangements, didn't he? We repair everything. Radio's our specialty. Everything? That takes on all the territory. Yeah, but it's good bait to catch our fish. transmitter, we can monitor it with this. We can also use it to get in touch with Mr. Hobson if we have to. I said we might find them around Santa Del Rio. Let's see what we can do with this thing. Senor Davis, this is Nico. Yeah, what's up, Nico? There are a couple of Americans in town with a fixie truck. They say they can fix anything, especially radios. This may be the break we need. Look, don't let them out of your sight. I'll be there in a half hour. Oh, Nico, make sure these guys are all right. We don't want any trouble. One is theirs. Yeah, looks like a mite. I have something I want you to fix. Oh, well, step right up. We fix anything. These watch have great sentimental value. My father stole it from Pancho Villa. Well, I'll tell you, my man's busy right now, but I'll be glad to fix it. No, no. Huh? Don't worry, don't worry. Mia Especialidad. Mia Especialidad. A minute. <laughs> Spring work. <laughs> Not shockproof. Caramba! You broke my watch. I kill you. Hold it, hold it, amigo. What seems to be the trouble? Ah, this hombre is loco en a cabeza. He take my good watch to fix. The watch my father stole from a most distinguished hombre. And instead of fixing it, he make it go poof. And the little parts that are supposed to be inside, come outside. Just like that. 
For will the gallant caballero accept our most humble apologies? Accidents sometimes do happen. But uh, what about my watch? Well, that's a very simple matter, senor. Hmm? Oh. Hey! Accept this replacement with our esteem and the compliments of senor Mudd and myself. Which is good, yes. Which is good, yes. We ought to watch. She'd never work anyway. <laughs> You are in business here in Mexico, senor? Yes, we are, sir. Then you will oblige to show me your work permits. Of course, sir. Uh, Nicky, show the captain our work permits. Right. Is he kidding? I don't have any work permits. I told you to bring them. Yeah, but I thought a work permit was a gag, like a left-handed monkey wrencher, a cloud stretcher. I just wanted to guy need a permit to work. He... he uh, I... I'm sorry, Captain. It seems that my partner has neglected the permits. In that case, I will have to ask you to accompany me to the carcel. Carson, what's that? The jail. Oh, jail? You are pleased to accompany these motorcycle officers. This is a pretty kettle of fish. We come down here on an important mission and get ourselves slammed into the clink because we don't have any work permits. Look, we're wasting time. Why don't you pay our fine so we can get out of here? Because I want to see what might happen. I'll tell you what'll happen. Our beards will grow so long, nobody will recognize us. I'll take it easy. I have a hunch there's more to this arrest than appears on the surface. Look, I... Senores, come outside and enjoy some of our fine Mexican sunshine. You mean you're letting us out of here? That is right, senor. A friend of yours has put up the money for your fine. Hey. A friend of ours? Hi, guys. Captain give you the good news? He sure did. Yes, he did, and uh, we're much obliged. But why should you do this for us? Well, you don't suppose I'd let a couple of Americans ride in jail without doing something about it, do you? My name is Davis, Henry D. Davis. I'm in the exporting business down here. I'm Jim Albright. This is my partner, Ichabod Mudd. You can call me Icky. Hi, Icky. Say, I see by your truck outside you fellas are fix-it men. What do you have in mind? An electric shaver. I can't find anyone in this burg that's even seen one, let alone fix it. Tell you what we'll do. Since you've been so nice to us, we'll uh, fix your shaver for free. It's a deal. Say, why don't you be my guest? Nothing I'd like better than to shoot the breeze with a couple of guys from the States. Fine. I have my car outside. Why don't you get in your truck and follow me? We'll be right behind you. This is a pretty nice fella, huh? Boys and girls, watch Johnny Jones as he shows you what Captain Midnight means when he tells you to drink instant Ovaltine for rocket power. Now, later, here's Johnny with his friend Wilbur. As you know, Johnny lives up to the Secret Squadron pledge to drink Ovaltine every day. But Wilbur isn't a Secret Squadron member. He doesn't get the proper foods, and he doesn't know that Ovaltine is a real food supplement. See what happens when they start the race. There goes Johnny, rocket-powered. But poor Wilbur, he's out of gas. He just doesn't have what it takes. You see, Ovaltine is more than just a flavoring for milk. Ovaltine contains important amounts of vitamins, minerals, and other food elements to help give you rocket power and to help you be like Captain Midnight himself. Ask your mother to get you instant chocolate-flavored Ovaltine today and be a loyal member of the Secret Squadron and a leader in your gang. Why don't you start drinking Ovaltine today? This is it. What do you manufacture here? Mexican pottery. Big market for the stuff in Europe. Say, I'd like to take a look at some of it. Well, there's not much to see. This is my warehouse, office, and what have you. Where did this come from? Well, that piece is from the state of Pueblo. Oh, I thought you said you manufactured the stuff yourself. 
Well, we do, some of it. Let's not talk about pottery, unless you're interested. Well, I am interested in it. Uh, do you use local clay? Well, I had no idea you had so much interest in pottery. I'll show you around if you like. But first, I'd like you to have a look at my radio. Radio? Yeah, I'm a radio ham. About the only means I have of talking to Americans and keeping in touch with the states. What seems to be wrong with it? You don't have to tell me. Santo Del Rio is no place to get it fixed. Take a look at it, will you? See you, Davis. Oh, excuse me a minute. See what you can do with it, will you? I'll be right back. Okay. This is it. This is what we've been looking for. I can't believe Davis is an enemy. He's too nice a guy. But the evidence is all against him. Look at these call letters. 62Y40. Well, let's see how quickly we can get this thing back into operation so that Mr. Hobson can tune in that message. Fissionable materials. Fissionable materials. I wonder. In this building? I don't know. I'm going to take a look around. First, I'm going to get some tools from the truck. Pretend like you're working on the transmitter. Okay. So you're just fix-it men, are you? With a powerful radio hidden in a panel truck? Well, we're just radio enthusiasts like you. You're a pretty smart guy, Captain Midnight. So you know who I am? Yeah, I know who you are, and now I know you really can fix that transmitter. So get inside and get busy. Hey, what is this? Don't ask questions. Get that set fixed. Oh, no, no, going? hold it. They got us covered. That's talking sense. If this transmitter isn't in good working order when you're through... It'll be in perfect working order. What sort of an American are you anyway? I'm not an American. It's just convenient for me to seem to be one. Keep them covered, Nico. And watch out for them. They're tricky customers. Alone. You want the radio fixer, don't you? Hold these. No. Just stay where you are. I will help you myself. Okay. You got them? See, I have them. That rope, Iggy, tie him up. You always won't get away with this. I promise you, you would pay for it. Ah, shut up. Put him in that chair. Come on. I'll leave you to fix the radio. Run a new lead to the condenser. You're back on the air. Okay. Put out a tone signal so that Mr. Hobson and Tuttle Nova sets back on the air. Who do you... Who do you think you're playing with, school children? Get everything you can and load it on the truck right away. This will be our last shipment. But what's the hurry? Captain Midnight has come here, and that means someone is suspicious of our activities. Well, who could suspect that the clay of which these simple parts are made of contain radioactive materials? I don't know, but I won't feel safe here any longer. When the radio is fixed, I'll get through to Captain Zabakin on the ship, arrange for him to meet us on the coast. We've got to get out of here today.
Good work. All right, tie him up. Well, he's detected the presence of our fissionable material. We'll be miles out to sea before he can tell anyone about it. All right, come on. Get your hands up. Don't make a move. Get him untied. Uh, what's that you say, hombre, about school children? Oh, no, no. High school graduates I was talking about. <coughs> oh. 62Y40 calling Captain Zabakin on the SS Grovich. The last of the pottery is on its way, Captain Zabakin, and I'm leaving immediately. Prepare to take us aboard your ship as soon as we arrive on the coast. That is all. Out. Talk to a ship at sea. Tell me later. We've got to catch him. You happen to set up the roadblock just at the right moment. I will let our friend Captain Midnight explain. Well, as you know, Icky, the United States and Mexican governments work very closely together in matters concerning hemisphere defense. 
Very closely, senores. Now, when Davis sent out that message on the repaired transmitter, the Capitan was listening. You weren't? But of course. You have been watched ever since Mr. Hobson arranged with us for that truck that you found waiting for you. By one of the Capitan's men, Detective Sergeant Gonzalez. A detective? Oh. And this one belongs to you. I thought I'd never see it again. When Detective Gonzalez noticed one of Davis's men watching our fix-it truck with unusual interest, he arranged to have us jailed to bring Davis out into the open. And you will be pleased to learn that the man referred to as Captain Zavakin has been apprehended in a coastal port and the entire shipload of radioactive pottery confiscated. You've done a great job. Without your help, Captain Midnight, our success would have been impossible. May your people and ours always work together in harmony for the preservation of our common ideals. Captain, I speak for all Americans when I say I share your wish. Now for a visit to the Secret Squadron Hall of Fame. Gee, the Secret Squadron Hall of Fame. Yes, Jack, and every one of these great athletes is a member of the Secret Squadron. For example, Crazy Legs Hirsch, one of football's all-time, all-time greats. And Florence Chadwick, world-famous English Channel swimmer. And here is Duke Snyder. His four home runs during the 1955 World Series led the Brooklyn Dodgers to their first world championship. Let's join Duke in the clubhouse. Duke, what do you do to keep yourself in top condition? Well, Captain Midnight, I get plenty of sleep, exercise, and the right kind of foods. And I drink chocolate-flavored Ovaltine. Remember, I said Ovaltine, not one of those imitation milk flavorings or the other kind with just a few vitamins. That's right, Duke. Ovaltine's got what it takes. 27 vitamins, minerals, and other essential food elements that make Ovaltine such a rich source of nourishment. And Ovaltine tastes good, too. Right again, Duke. Boys and girls, drink your Ovaltine every day, just as Duke Snyder says. Get chocolate-flavored Ovaltine. Now, get your pencil and paper ready for our three-word secret clue to next week's exciting adventure. Write down these numbers. First word. Three. Eight. Eighteen. Seven. Second word. Seven. Five. Two. Five. Four. One. Third word. Eight. Nine. Five. Three. Eight. Five. Twenty-two. Seven. Now, set your decoder for C9 and solve next week's exciting adventure. See you next week. Out. <laughs>